Okay, everyone ready? Radio silent. I was speaking into my stopwatch. <laughs> I'm recording. <it. laughs> All right, everyone ready? Radio silence, please. Cameras ready. Well, for starters, it's a bit slow. I mean, if I ran, it would be faster. Oh, I got him on the launch! Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Cars.Coza show, brought to you, unsurprisingly, by Cars.Coza and shot in my lounge in the middle of an unprecedented nationwide lockdown. Now, before we carry on, I must say a huge thank you to everyone who's watched so far and all the amazing feedback we've had. And if you haven't seen episodes one and two, you absolutely must check them out on our YouTube channel. Well, not right now, but when you, you, know, when you finish this one and just, just go in and check them out. Alrighty, what you're about to see is a combination of some of our best YouTube content as well as new content shot safely under lockdown. Coming up in this episode, I experience one of the fastest cars on earth. Ashley and I drag race the BMW M2 against the Audi RS3. We interview local YouTube sensation Liberable we meet the owner of Cape Town's one and only Super Beetle, and lastly, the Toyota Yaris Grumman takes on its rivals in a head-to-head -head track race. Before we get started, the hashtag for the show is Cosa Show. If you want, you can do a capital C and a capital S. If you're ped I do that. I do that all the time, actually. And uh, me and the team will be online to chat to you throughout the premiere. But that is more than enough from me. Let's get cracking. First up, the McLaren 720S roll tape. Oh wait, there's no one, there's no one here. It's just, it's me, I have to, I have to roll the tape. I have to roll the tape. I picked up this car yesterday and I was driving it around Cape Town and I messaged my colleagues and I said guys I'm having a bit of a crisis I don't think this car is that exciting and they all said blah blah how can 700 horsepower how can it not be exciting and I just didn't get it until I came out here onto this deserted mountain pass I flicked everything into track mode the screen folded away revealing just my gears, my revs, and the speed. Drop a few cogs, second gear, foot flat. Here we go. That's this. <laughs> Brutal acceleration. Zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds, zero to 200 in 7.8 seconds, top speed of 341 kilometers an hour. This is one of the fastest production cars ever made. Full stop, that's it, end of story. Quarter mile, 10.3 seconds. It's a 10 second car running on road tires. That's ridiculous. <laughs> But so many Germans wave at me today. It's been a great day. It's been a minute right now. I've been living that life on the road both times, man. I get in that pound. Music hazy, ten to daily. I don't wanna lick a man down. All GBH too royal to miss my aim, man's getting that crown. Both times be the king getting queen's head, know that she going down. Watch couple flicks and chill life jacket, make sure she doesn't drown. Got no squares in a circle, so no wonder she coming round. They with a back to the loud both sides, so you ear out of speaking them sound. So you ear out of speaking them sound. That's how we're living right now. 
If this was just a sculpture, if this was left in a park somewhere for people to sit and admire, it would be an achievement. But it's not just a piece of art. It's a car. It moves and it breathes. Look at the drama created by these double hinged doors attached to the carbon fiber monocage which runs over the top of the car. It's just pure theater. It's created pandemonium everywhere we've taken it. But every curve of this car's bodywork serves a purpose. Look at the doors, for instance. They're double skinned. That's an air swisher, which is the technical term. And that rams cold air from over the bonnet into the radiator, which cools down the four liter twin turbo V8. And then of course, there's the most obvious piece of bodywork, the active hydraulic rear wing. Now it can act as an air brake, but mostly it creates downforce, up to 180 kilograms of downforce. And trust me, you're going to need it. One of the most astonishing things about the 720 is, is the way it grips off the line. Now, a lot of people think, and I think myself, that if you have too much power, you've got to put it through all four wheels and that's the best way to launch. But there's some sort of voodoo that McLaren have worked out. So you flick it into track or sports, activate that, press this launch control button here. This is one of the easiest cars to launch in the world, actually. It says launch mode active, left foot on the brake, boost building, boost ready, here we go. folding into the dashboard like that might seem a bit of a gimmick but actually what it does is open up this incredibly clear view of the road ahead and as the salesman who handed the car over to me yesterday said it's so you can concentrate <laughs> and you really need to concentrate <laughs> This car isn't just a reskinned 650S, it's brand new from the ground up. There's a new Monocage 2 carbon fiber cell protecting me, which feels quite nice, but running through the roof, holding the doors up, holding everything in place, and of course, making this car extremely light. And lightness is key to why this car is so quick. It weighs less than a Golf GTI. In fact, it's closer to a Polo GTI than a Golf. 1,283 kilograms is its dry weight. And <laughs> Mental! For another woman, for another time I don't even know why we bothered to try Guess you always knew it right from the start But you couldn't resist playing with my heart it's one thing to talk about power figures and those are incredible figures but it's the way this power makes it onto the road that is really incredible twin scroll turbochargers whooshing away behind me are sucking in planets full of air they really don't take a long time to spool up they're always always at the ready especially in track mode and the thing is you think to yourself you get to a certain speed and you get to a certain RPM and you think this is it there can't be any more power and then you push your right foot down a little bit more and there's more power there's always more power the peak power of 529 kilowatts hits you at 7500 RPM and the red line is at 8200 RPM you have to really ring this motor out to get every last horsepower through the rear tires and down onto the tarmac and that makes this car equal parts terrifying and brilliant at the same time
After spending two days with this car, I've realized that its power and handling ability are otherworldly. You cannot get close to this car's abilities in the real world. You have to take it to a racetrack. And that makes me very sad that we didn't find a racetrack today. I mean, is there any point to a car like that? I don't know, but what I can tell you is it's very rare that a car blows my mind quite like that car did. Now, moving on to a young man who is not a stranger to speed. Mr. Nias Isaacs is not only one of the nicest people you will ever meet, but in a short space of time, he's become an absolute legend on the local motoring scene. His YouTube channel, which he runs pretty much single-handedly, has just hit 40,000 subscribers. I'm a huge fan of his work and I'm immensely glad that he could join me for this interview. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Cars.Coza show, the YouTuber more commonly known as Liberable. The South African YouTube channel Liberable has become synonymous with the fanatical drag racing scene in Cape Town. In a short few years, the channel has racked up nearly 9 million views and viewers not only get to ride shotgun in the latest cars, they get a candid view of Niaz's life. It is very early, it's half past, well, quarter past five in the morning and I'm up because I'm about to surprise a kid and drop him at school with this Ford Mustang GT 5.0 Okay, so let me put this car into quiet mode here yeah. Of course, just like the rest of us, Niaz is staying at home during the lockdown and so he joined me on Skype in my lounge for a catch-up Mr. Niaz Isaacs from Liber Ribble, how are you? All right, and you, Chiro, how are you doing? Yeah, man, Ach, you know, as best we can under these crazy circumstances, but it's really good to see you. <laughs> over, <laughs> over a big 52-inch TV. <laughs> yeah, you life-size, bigger than life-size right now. Um, you know what I've always wanted to ask you? What the hell does Liber Ribble mean? So liberable means to, if you read it forwards, it's liberable. If you read it backwards, it's liberable. It's just like a, like to liberate and to rebel, basically. We all liberate and we all rebel. I like it. I like it a lot. That's been bothering me for years. I've known you for a long time. I don't know why I've never asked you that. <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think some congratulations are in order because you just hit 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh, well, thank you, Chiro. And you are also over 200. <laughs> yeah, you but, know? but you you just, the, the thing is, what, what's incredible, I think, about your rise on YouTube is, I mean, I've got corporate backing, which is a very different story. Uh, whereas you are, I mean, you are you. You're a one-man band. You're the channel. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, a, not an easy situation, but it's like it's I'm enjoying myself. So, so Niaz, you've built this incredible local following, and what do you think it is that's contributed to your, your success on the local scene? Do you know, honestly, I definitely think it's like showing a big variety of cars from very cheap to really expensive. And that way you kind of get an audience that isn't only, that isn't just one part that you kind of get a bigger crowd. Um, I think your VTEX, your Nissans, your, your Audis, your, your local BMWs, there's such a big culture around those cars and it's really helped my channel um, get a foothold in, 
the South African market. But I think you do such a great job of showcasing these like sort of what are home built cars essentially built by amateurs out of sheer passion with cars that are built by you know billion dollar R&D budgets from from Germany you know and and I think that you you do a great job of showcasing both of those which one do you think is more challenging to review for me it's it's, it's a matter of like just imagine reviewing a thousand horsepower Supra, right? And you go in first gear, second gear, third, and you go second gear back to first gear again, and the guy's pistons come, go through his bloody <laughs> cylinder. <laughs> you know? But on the, the local drag scene, which I think you've managed to capture, the drag racing scene, you've managed to capture really, yes. really well. Those are some of the most passionate petrol heads in the country, I think. I agree, I agree. And and like you know what the banter between the guys is so funny? Sometimes it gets really serious and sometimes it's, it's rather um, bantery. But a lot of the time I think it's a lot of fun. I can't only bother myself with the politics. But um God, it's fun, man. To see a a Toyota Supra or something hold its ass like one, two, three, four, <laughs> up alive is four oh, so thing. Have have you have you managed to take like a a fast stock car to to a drag race one of the press cars? I have, I have. It was Toyota Supra, and believe it or not, the VW Amarok. Yeah. V6. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so you went and lined yeah. up against these guys in a bucky. Yeah, and actually beat some of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> that must be so demoralizing if you've spent your life working on your car and this guy shows up in a bucky. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that bucky is so fast. Like, yeah. out, of the, out of the hole, I was very surprised by it. Um, I think one of my, my dreams would be uh, to really get a car, modify it and race like Kidani. But not like an old car, like yeah. something modern to show people how easy it is nowadays to actually get power from these modern cars. Yeah. I, I think what you've done is given a, a voice to some of the most passionate petrol heads in the country. You know, guys who are literally in their garages underneath their cars getting covered in oil all the time. And, and do you think that maybe yeah. you, you'd like to expand to the Joburg scene, the Durban scene? I would absolutely love that. Um, I think this year was one of the years where I wanted to do like a tour thing, go to Joburg to review 10 cars, go to Durban review 10 cars and PE as well, because there's quite a bit of people up there who watch the channel, but um, yeah man, it's not easy being a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, have a lot, I have a huge amount of respect for you and, and what you've created and what you've done and your growth has been astronomical, you know, especially in, in a local context. And I wish you all the best, man. I hope you go from strength oh, to strength. You. Definitely. Thank you so much, Hugo. And <laughs> you as well, dude. Like, <laughs> dude, I remember telling you that your Aston Martin video, I think it was the DB11. Yeah. I literally had my eyes boiling at the end of that video. <laughs> like some, some, some other cinematography or something. Um, that was before Liberable, actually. Um, I think I think before a little bit before Liberable. Um, that was one of the videos that wanted me to dive head forward into YouTube because I just literally hit my breath away. Oh man, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much, man. I know you're fasting at the moment, so is it correct in me saying Ramadan Mubarak? Is that pronounced yeah, correctly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I'm like looking for a glass of water, but I can't drink any water because I'm about to stop. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> well, listen, man. All the best <laughs> and uh, stay safe during these crazy times, during these lockdown times. And I wish you all the best in creating content as well during these, these lockdown times. Thank you so much, Shiro. And all the best to you as well. Be safe. Ciao. Thank you, Shiro. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> Guys, it's so good. There we go, Liberable. Please do check out and subscribe to his channel. We'll put the link on the screen right now and it will be in the description below.
Let's go back to 2018 when the BMW M2 just hit the local motoring scene. Now there's nothing quite like a German hot hatch rivalry to set the internet on fire. And so our in-house race ace organized a BMW M2 and what was then the current Audi RS3 for a drag race and a track race. Audi sent us the brand new RS3 Sportback, but BMW didn't have an M2 for us to use. So we tracked one down, and if you look closely, you can see that the M2 is privately owned. Okay, the one thing we have done today to make this extremely fair and accurate is both cars have been fitted with RaceLogic V boxes, so all the timing will be done via satellite and a whole bunch of computers. For the drag race, I would pilot the Audi and our in-house race ace Ashley would be in the M2. Right, 900,000 Rand Audi, 960,000 Rand Beamer, three liter straight six turbo. That sounds like launch control. <laughs> Zero to hundred and four point two seconds. I reckon it's a lot quicker than that. Whoa! Oh, that is a lot of braking. And the race logic box says the Audi did it in twelve point six. That's very, very fast. The M2 was point two four seconds behind the RS3. But Ash had a hunch that with some heat in the tires, the Beamer would launch a bit better. However, activating launch control in the M2 is another story altogether. Launch control in the Audi, sport mode, traction control off, left foot on the brake, right foot on the loud pedal, bang, off you go. Launch control in the Beamer, phone the dealership, do some research on the forums, go for a shakedown run, warm up the oil, man. They do not make it easy. Hallelujah! Launch control activated. Countdown in five, four, three, two, Here we go. One. Oh, that's a good start. That's pretty much neck and neck. The beam is pulling nicely. It's gaining on me a little bit, actually. No, I think I've got him. Here we go. In the second race, the Audi ran a 12.9 dead and the Beamer came in at 13.17, an almost identical result to the first race. With rear wheel drive and less power, but slightly more torque, the Beamer had acquitted itself well on the drag strip. Alrighty, the track race, everything to play for here. We did know that the RS3 was probably going to take the drag race and it did, but can the lesser powered M2 take one on the track. We're going to do two timed laps, one standing start and one flying lap of each car. Ash is ready, let's not waste any time. Give me a thumbs up, Ash. Alrighty, in five, four, three, two, one, go. To that thing. Okay, he's on to the back straight. So Ash has got the timing for his laps in his car. He's going to radio me with the times. I'm going to put them up on the board. Here we go. So this is going to be the standing start now. Holy crap! That must have been about 200, 220 k's an hour. Easy. Pretty 
quick. Demon's got its work cut out for it, that's for sure. There he comes! That's very quick! <laughs> Nothing can prepare you for a car going that quickly, less than a meter away from your feet. Ash, give me some times. Audi on a standing start lap did 131.37 and on a flying lap, 127.32. Thank you, sir. All right, there we go. The times to beat. Standing start for the Audi, 131.37. Flying lap, 127.32. Get the Beamer out. <laughs> Can the M2 steal one from the Audi? Thumbs up, Ash. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Interesting fact, the exhaust, which BMW sells you for that M2 if you tick a certain box, is so loud that it's illegal. How cool is that? Quick. That's very quick. Did I lose my stand? You know, Ash gets the easy job. I have a feeling this is going to be very close. I'm super excited. Is he going to beat the Audi? And across the line. Nice one, Ash. He's so good at this. He's just, he's really good at, you know, driving. Okay. All right, Ash, go for it when you're ready. So, so the tense. Beamer on a standing start lap did 131.19 and on a flying lap, 127.01. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Two tenths between them on the standing start <laughs> and three tenths on the flying lap. That's it. That is all that separates the new M2 from the new Audi RS3. I can't believe that. That is so close. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go have a beer, I think. Now, up next, one of our Cars.coza filmmakers, the brilliant Dwayne Aspielen, is responsible for the launch control series of videos on our YouTube channel. This is a series which focuses on modified cars in South Africa and the modified scene. And in this next video, Dwayne must have found one of the most incredible modified cars in South Africa. In fact, I don't think modified car actually does this thing justice. It's more of a creation. So here is the story of Cape Town's one and only Subaru-powered Super Beetle. I've always liked my cars modified, you know, I, I wouldn't settle for just, you know, standard.
I was a Subaru fan as well as I was a Beetle fan. So somehow the two just connected because they boxer engines and they were flat motors. And I thought, you know, it, it should work. I remember as a child growing up, uh, we, we had family outings and uh, we'd go to the beach. Uh, when we were finished, we used to run to my uncle's Beetle and everybody wanted to sit at the back of the Beetle and that would be nice and warm. We used to sit in the back and uh, we'd get this new car smell because the car stood in the sun the whole day. So um, that inspired me to, to one day own a Beetle of my own. Clint Kirkwood, he was uh, the inspiration behind the build. I remember distinctly it was a Friday afternoon and my son was still very small, he was probably about four years old or so. And um, Clint offered to take me for the drive in the Subaru built Beetle and I got hooked. It was love at first sight and that's where the love affair started. So uh, we opt for a 2 litre Subaru EJ20 turbocharged engine. With the supporting mods we managed to at the end, get out almost just over 281 kilowatt, which was quite a, a significant amount for such a small car. When we decided we were going to build a drag car, we obviously wanted the right supporting mods and uh, we then bought uh, off-the-shelf T3 T4 turbo we had custom fuel rails made we had 1000 cc injectors added on Clint match ported the intake and the exhaust to get the best performance out of it on the front we've got uh, BMW disc brakes on the rear we've got uh, VW disc brakes we put in a drift handbrake got some racing seats we've got a full roll cage we're running on semi slicks uh, we've got some ducting that puts the air into the intercooler so uh, it is functional it's just not for show a nice spoiler and uh, we've got a big drag uh, wing which definitely helps for downforce down the drag strip when we originally built the car we put on 18 inch Porsche cup rims which we thought will, will go well with the German look um, that we were originally starting with but that didn't work out too well because it was just a terrible ride so we ended up buying a brand new set of bbs wheels we had them widened 9j and 10j and uh, that's the custom wheels that we had sprayed candy apple center with a high gloss black lip we've also um, did some upgrades with the polyurethane bushing on the front end we did some supporting arms with the rose joints we had some uh, custom coilovers made front and rear and some custom springs so from from a suspension point of view we've overruled everything and we feel that we on the right track We want people to see it, we want, we want to get it out there, we want to showcase what we're capable of uh, doing in our backyard or in our garage. Often people ask me, so you know, where did this color scheme come from? Um, one one thing that inspired me was a picture that I saw almost 10 years ago on the internet. So um, thanks to my spray painter Graham, who went on this journey with me, uh, we've had our ups and downs in terms of trying to get to the result or a happy medium, so to speak. And um, I think we've nailed it. I think we've pretty much got something that is damn close to what we originally saw on this picture. I want to drive that Beetle so badly and I really hope the day comes soon where I'll have the opportunity. Big shout out to Adonis. Thanks very much for spending time with us 
and showing us your pride and joy. Now in episode two of the Cars.coza show, we featured the ultra rare Toyota Yaris Grimmen hatchback, of which there are only three in the entire country, and they're not even for sale, in a series of drag races. And we promised you that in this episode, we'd show you the track race where the Yaris takes on three of its rivals. And so we hired the Kalani racetrack, Ashley shined up his helmet, we got all the cars to the track and prayed that it didn't rain, which it did. Hello and welcome to the Kalani Racetrack where today we are proud to present the ultimate warm hatch shootout. Today four warm hatches will go head to head in a battle for supremacy. The new Volkswagen Polo GTI, the new Mini Scooper, the new Clio F1 and the Yaris Grimmner. Grimmen. Grr. Grimmner. Anyway, Ash is ready. He's in the Polo GTI. Each car will have one standing start hot lap to take victory. Ash, are you ready? Here we go, everyone. Five, four, three, two, one, go. That's a lot of wheel spin. The track is a bit damp today, that's for sure. It's going to get a bit understeery out there, but Ash can handle it. Probably. I think that car is pretty well set up for track driving, and I think it's got a good chance of winning today. So we're sending it out first because I wanted to set a time for everything else to beat. And it actually sounds quite good. Why does it change here for me? On the brakes. Hey, it's wet. Oh, we got some sliding action. Right, Ash is on turn three. That's quite a challenging corner. You've got to run the car out wide all the way onto the rumble strips. The rumble strips will be wet today. That will be a little bit of a clenching moment. You know, a little, little clench. Come on, come on. There we go, all right. Into the double right. Down a gear. Come on, fight the understeer through the wet. Gas on, nice bit of traction. Okay, down the back straight. You can hear him absolutely flat footing it. You know Ash will be pushing these cars as hard as possible to get the best time out of them. All right, he's coming through turn five. Now it's onto the main straight. This is it. And here it comes. The polo looks good. Across the line. Ash, when you are ready, give me the polo's time. In the wet and slippery conditions of Kilani Raceway, the polo has managed a 140.0. 140.004, the polo GTI. Right, can the five-door mini scooper beat it? Three, two, one, go! Off. The traction control killing the wheel spin off the line. That's to be expected today. It is getting greasy out there. A little bit of rain coming down. Okay, its name is actually the Mini Cooper S. I do like to call it the Mini Scooper. And it looks like the fattest car here, but it actually isn't. Those honors go to the Polo. Mini's about 20 kgs lighter than the Polo, funnily enough. Down into the sweeping right. This is no good in the wet. There's oversteer, understeer. There's no steer. Oh, all over the track here. Come on. One of the bigger engines here today as well, two liter four cylinder. You'll find that engine in so many BMW and Mini products. It's a really hard working engine that obviously turned down for the Mini, 141 kilowatts, 280 Newton meters, and it has the slowest zero to 100 time here of 6.8 seconds. Down to the final corner, we did 192 here in the Polo. We're gonna get to that 180, about 184. Get on the brakes here. Oh, we're sliding across the track again. Try and pick up a bit of apex. There we go, There's less water right here, better exit. Right, here he comes, up the main straight. Doesn't feel as urgent as the Polo. Coming up to the line, oh, it's definitely wetter. Ah, there he goes. 
across the line. The best the Mini could manage was a 143.4. Very nice, Ash, thank you. Right, 143.4, we did expect the Mini to be slower. It's a little bit greasier out there, so I'll give it a greasy note, asterisk. There we go. Right, time to move on to the special edition Clio. Go. Turn in. Oh, this is a million times sharper than that Mini. Come on, get some good power out here. Yes! Why are the freaking paddles in the wrong place? You just shift fresh air. Okay, let's get down here. Oh, the brakes are good. The steering isn't so good. But it's fast. I can feel this is fast. Let's get on the power here. Yes! The paddles are still in the wrong place. Let's do the jump. That's a good jump. It's got the most power here, 162 kilowatts, but it has quite a bad torque figure, actually. Hang on, let me consult my cheat sheet. Yes, 260 newton meters. Second worst figure here, actually. A good 60 newton meters less than the Polo. So you spend 100 grand more and you get 60 newtons less. Yeah. Oh, this is so much better than the Mini. This is so much better! 180, 185, over the bump, 188, way! The brakes are good. It's stable, let's get it in here. Oh my word, he's already on turn five. Oh, this is a much better car. Go, go, go! Oh, that was way more fun, what a fun car to drive on track. It did eight, one minute 38.7. Whoa, 1 minute 38.7. It is our new leader. 1.3 seconds faster than the Polo. Nice one, Ash. Right, the special edition Yaris Grimina has its work cut out for it. And in five, four, three, two, one, go. That sounds amazing. Listen to that. Not bad, or a little bit of understeer. I think that's more the track than actually the car. Right, that is the only supercharged car here. I really like the way that thing looks. It looks like an angry Japanese honey badger. Get it tucked in here. Oh, it's not bad. Sure, as this boost comes on, it really starts to push the front end. Gonna try it here in fourth, get it run. Let the torque do the work. We've got a good run onto the straights here. Come on, we're at 170 ish. It's about 190 actually. Get on the brakes. They are good brakes. Again, as the power comes on, there's a little bit of understeer. Absolutely bombing up the main straight. Come on, go for the line. That little thing looks good. Here he comes. Whoa, that felt really quick. Oh my word, I'm so excited. All right, Ash, don't leave me hanging here. Give me a time, give me a time. Oh, the feisty little Yaris Gremlin thing has done a 137.7. Whoa, fastest car of the day, a second quicker than the Clio. Nice one, Ash. There you have it in our ultimate warm hatch shootout, the limited edition Yaris Grimina has taken it. Thank you very, very much for watching. Make sure to check out our channel, subscribe, and have a look at all the drag races featuring these cars. Man, that was exciting. So the weather gods made our lives a bit difficult today. The Mini faced the worst conditions, but it didn't really have the firepower to bother the other cars anyway. The track did dry up a bit for the Yaris, and Ash reckons in identical conditions, it would have been very close between the Clio and the Grimmin. The Polo was arguably a little too mainstream to ever run the Clio and Yaris close, but it remains the best daily driver. The Yaris, however, was by far the most fun. There we go. That's it. That is episode three of the Cars.coza show. Thank you so much 
for joining us. And just before I go, I just want to remind you that during the lockdown or whatever level of South Africa's response to COVID-19, Casa Cosa is fully up and running. We're doing everything humanly possible to help the country, help our dealers and our customers through this extraordinary moment in our nation's history. I'll see you same time, same place, Thursday, 8 p.m., right here on our YouTube channel. Until then, stay strong, South Africa. Stay safe, stay home, look after yourselves and each other. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.